I work for Mainstream Renewable Power, founded in February 2008 by Dr. Eddie O'Connor. Prior to founding Mainstream, Eddie was the founder and CEO at Airtricity. He founded Airtricity in 1997 with 12 million pounds of seed capital, sold it a decade later for two and a half billion dollars. If you convert it all to euros, it's a 77-fold increase in shareholder value in a decade. Eddie is one of the great uh, international thought leaders on sustainability. Uh, the very first wind farm in Ireland was, was built uh, while he was CEO at Gordon Amona. Um, so we're, we're convinced in mainstream that the world is on a once-off historical transition to sustainability, uh, away from depleting fossil fuel to sustainable energy from the sun in the form of solar and a derivative thereof, which is wind. But there are four fundamentals driving this. The first is climate change. Uh, this summer we saw the greatest uh, shrinkage of the Arctic ice in history. Um, back in 2007, um, uh, Lewis Gordon Pugh was able to swim at the North Pole in July of that year. But uh, this, this is quite a dramatic effect. It's, um, you, don't, you, don't, you don't immediately feel it. It's like the frog being boiled slowly. You don't feel it straight away. But essentially, the Earth's uh, air conditioning system is now starting to break down. Um, the second driver for this move to sustainability is the exploding demand for energy itself. Um, last year, China added 100,000 megawatts of energy to its grid. Um, Germany's grid equates to 86,000 megawatts. China added Germany to its grid last year. It'll do it this year, it'll do it next year. They'll add 23 Germanys um, over the next number of years. Um, there simply isn't the fossil fuel for that to happen. <laughs> and India is, is racing up behind them. I learned yesterday, looking at Forbes, that there are now over one million millionaires in China. There are 400 billionaires in China. And in fact, there are 300 million people in China whose average income is higher than Europe's average income. 300 million Chinese are richer than Europe. Uh, it's a phenomenal story. The, the third key driver for this change is the rising uh, fossil fuel price, which is now part of the US military's uh, strategic uh, outlook. In their report from um, March uh, 2010, General Matthias, uh, who's now the, who's not, he was actually now the, the chief of staff, he was US Marine Corps at the time, he, he for the first time describes how energy is a, is a security threat to the US and they predict by 2015 uh, supply problems. The US military is the world's largest uh, purchaser of oil. If it was a country, it would be the eighth largest country in the world in terms of energy uh, consumption. During the invasion of Iraq, uh, in the six weeks of the invasion, the US military used more oil in that invasion than all allies used in all theaters in the Second World War. Uh, Richard Branson of Verge and Ian Merchant of SSE wrote a report at the request of the British government around about the same time, and in that report, uh, Richard Branson describes how by 2015, Virgin Atlantic will have, will have supply problems if they don't do something about it now. Um, oil was $9 a barrel in 1997, and $147 a barrel a decade later. That's a 16-fold increase. Your, your, your mind refuses to allow you to imagine another 16-fold increase. It's a thought that is illegal in your cerebrum. It's not allowed. But what if it happened, and uh, how might it happen, and what are we doing about it? So, Sustainability again. It's interesting when you look at Europe's energy map that there is a very highly integrated natural gas distribution system. No such equivalent for electricity exists. And this is what Eddie talks about as the supergrid. That as Europe brings on board massive large-scale wind and solar, we need a brand new uh, electricity grid. And that will be largely driven by, by IT. It will be an intelligent grid. It will have uh, a lot of silicon, not, not so much copper. Uh, so crisis, what crisis? Interesting how the Chinese, when they, the word for crisis comprises the words danger and opportunity. So we are in a, a crisis as a nation, but you know, crisis is, the, is, is normal. It's not, if you're alive, you're in a permanent state of crisis. Uh, we are highly improbable creations, if you think about it, uh, as a species. Um, but when we talk about energy, if we don't solve sustainability, we don't have a civilization. We, our, our civilization is built on electricity. Um, to, for everything that we do. It's a, it's a foundation. So we need to do it, and it is happening, and the technology exists. In fact, Dr. Mark DeLucci of University of California wrote a report last year which shows that there, there is actually no economic nor technological barrier to moving to 100% sustainability through wind, hydro, and solar right now. And this was in the IEEE magazine. 
somebody inevitably wrote back to the editor challenging everything he said. His rebuttal is actually better than his original document because he's so lucid in his argument. And uh, it's online and I have a link at the end of my slide deck to have a look at. Um, so cloud computing and sustainable energy. Um, it's interesting that uh, I used to run uh, data centers uh, um, 12 years ago. Uh, that was my job in, um, in a company at the time I worked for. But at that time, for every $1,000 of new IT kit going into a data center, your annual recurring energy bill per thousand was $7. A decade later, it's $1,000. And that's because of the phenomenal increase in the processing capacity and the drop in price of, of, of all the hardware, obviously. But also, it, it's indicating how energy is going to the top. So anyone who runs data centers, anyone who runs the cloud will know energy is a big deal, right? Um, it's interesting that, uh, you know, when we talk about what do you want for, for in, in, in a cloud data center from an energy perspective, you want secure energy, you want a predictable price, and if your customers are starting to demand it, you probably want to look at green energy as well. Um, when you then look at, you know, where's, where's the trend, we've heard a lot about the, the mega trends about where, where all this is going, but, um, you, know, you know, late 2012, there's about 875,000 petabytes on the cloud right now. And uh, IDC estimate that by the end of this decade, um, that will grow to 35 uh, million petabytes, 35 zettabytes. That's a 40-fold increase in storage. And, uh, you know, you could, you could challenge the data as we, as we all tend to, right? But, but Intel are saying that um, by 2015, uh, quite much sooner, there will be 15 billion microprocessors in use, up from about 3 billion today. But 80% of that, they, they estimate, will be machine-to-machine -machine communication. But all of this creates data that maybe is not even included in that estimate down below, right? So the cloud is, as we all, we're all here to, we, we already know, we wouldn't be here if, if we didn't believe the cloud is on the way, but uh, th this creates a massive amount of, of energy requirement. In fact, currently, the IT sector consumes the same amount of energy as the airline sector. 4% of all the energy consumed on the planet is consumed by, by us in the IT sector. So Greenpeace, um, who are advocates, obviously, for, uh, uh, for, for, for you know, uh, a clean, healthy, sustainable planet, um, they're talking about how um, IT energy-related smart solutions are putting consumers um, in command of energy efficiency. Now, you'll have read a lot about smart grid and smart, you know, smart energy, but it's a very fuzzy area. There's very little that you could, you could draw from it right now in terms of definitions that everybody would accept. But there's no doubt that people are very curious about their energy and where it's coming from, and then the services and where are things made from. Uh, so if you think about uh, fair trade coffee, um, it's hard now to buy coffee that isn't fair trade, right? Um, we're starting to see that happen with energy. People are starting to ask, where does the energy come from in my product? Um, so Greenpeace, uh, you know, annually produce a, a leaderboard, a cool IT leaderboard. Uh, the maximum score is 100 points, and um, the highest score in the latest one is for Google at 53. Um, Microsoft and SAP are around about 23. Actually, IBM, HP, and Dell, who are all here, they score much better than Microsoft and SAP. Um, and uh, there's, the, there's the table, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not meant to be read out by me, but uh, it, it looks at three areas, uh, climate solutions, energy impact, and political advocacy. It's an opinion from Greenpeace. It's not, everything is an opinion. It's not, is it true, is it not? They, they stand over the data, they've, they've looked at it independently. They don't look at every single IT company, but it's quite interesting how, you know, cloud and cool IT leaderboard are starting to converge. Many of the companies listed have very clear cloud strategies, for example. Um, when we then talk about methodology, as, as a CIO in, um, in a sustainable-oriented uh, company, we had to build our, our, uh, our IT services in a sustainable manner. And we've worked with the Innovation Value Institute using their framework, which looks at a very structured approach to strategy, process, people, and, and governance. We actually have a secure private cloud. Um, in terms of how it's built, what's it built on, um, all, the, all the hardware is from HP. All the software is from Microsoft. Um, we went, we tried to keep it as simple as possible in, in, in partnering strategically, right? But the bottom line is that the processes um, and, and the strategy and the planning, they're the areas that can get you. Once you, you, you can make the big decisions on partnering, but how do you actually operate? So, they, so they've come up with very clear definitions. It was founded in 2006 by Intel and uh, Boston Consulting Group. The institute is hosted at NUI Maynooth, it now has over 70 members. And they've come up with very specific definitions about what they, you know, what do we mean when we talk about sustainability, sustainable ICT, et cetera. 
So sustainable cloud, uh, I talked about two mega trends colliding. So cloud computing, delivery of services, um, rather than uh, uh, de delivering um, uh, via hardware that you, you possess, your, 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 you know, cloud delivered services instead of uh, internally hosted services. But um, sustainability is the capacity to endure. So when you think about these two things happening at the same time, which they are, we're not, we're not having a conversation about cloud computing in, in isolation. We're in a dynamic changing environment uh, all the time. Sustainability is a reality. We have to include it in our, in our, in our thinking. So when we talk about sustainable cloud computing, the definition that we're, that we're uh, working on, we've, we've um, through the Institute, we're talking about uh, delivery of computing as a service over the internet, but uh, in a way that's uh, fundamentally using renewable energy sources with a low carbon footprint in the design. So right the way along the supply chain, it's, it's sustainable, right? But when you look at things at a na on a national level, you say, okay, why Ireland? Why not Sweden? Facebook, a year ago, their first data center outside the US, Facebook a year ago announced they were going to build a data center in Sweden. It's 11 soccer pitches in size. It's under construction in Sweden. The guy who made the decision is an Irish guy, actually, who works for Facebook. But Ireland on, the, on this chart um, uh, from Cushman Wakefield, and again, we can dispute the data, but I'm, you know, this is what is out there. This is what's being said uh, you know, by, by eminent ana analysts such as Cushman Wakefield, that Ireland is 16th on the league table of uh, where, to put a, um, where to put a data center. We're behind Thailand. We're behind Qatar. Qatar, today, it's probably 42 Celsius in Qatar. But the reason we're down there, according to this report, is because of our energy security and our sustainability. So we have to do something, you know? We talked earlier about skills and graduates. Ireland produces, yeah, under 1,000 graduates a year in, IC, in IT. The demand in the market is currently 2,000. But also, when you look at the OECD analysis of skills, um, where Finland is number one on maths proficiency, uh, coming out of you know, uh, high school or even cert, we're 26th out of 34. So, you know, despite our successes, we have to cold, have a cold and sober look at why, why is this data out there and what do we do about this? And I'm convinced we can do a lot about this, by the way. Um, so when we talk about sustainable cloud, the framework, we're talking about it in, in, you know, in terms of five, five layers. Um, sustainable cloud services. The service has to be available, secure, and confidential. That's without question. You can't, you can't uh, debate that. But uh, the energy supply should be sustainable. The energy distribution within the facility should be sustainable. We talk, there's a very big focus on efficiency of energy in data centers. Supply, uh, and you know, we're coming to the end, I think, of the efficiency curve unless we move to DC-powered servers. And Intel actually have a research project, and they've demonstrated DC-powered servers. So for those who are into UPS power supplies, that would mean that the, 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 the current coming out of the UPS is not converted up into AC and back down to DC at the motherboard level. It's DC all the way. Um, energy, energy use is interesting. Microsoft's big data center in Grange Castle is passively cooled. Christian Bellati, who designed that, who's now head of data center services in Microsoft, um, he built it with air conditioning on the roof uh, and three years after took the air conditioning off and sold it. There was no air conditioning, not even as a backup system in that data center. The air in Ireland, guess what? You don't need air conditioning in Ireland. You never did. Um, and then sustainable building. Uh, uh, Owen Lewis, former CEO at uh, SEI, is internationally recognized for his sustainable building uh, competence. And so what we've looked at here is marshalling a coalition across these five areas to look at, well, how could Ireland get competitive advantage by being the first to have sustainable cloud? Um, the right attitude always helps. As, as Henry Ford said, <laughs> where do you think you can do it? Or where do you think you can't? You're right. Uh, I'll leave on that note. So thank you.